the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, Uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Almighty God, merciful Father, you crown our life with your love. You take away our sin. You comfort our spirit. You make us pure and holy in your sight. You did not spare your only Son, but gave him up for us all. O Lord, our Lord, how glorious is your name in all the earth. O Son of God, eternal Word of the Father, you came to live with us. You made your Father known. You washed us from our sins in your own blood. You are the King of glory. You are the Lord, O Lord, our Lord. How glorious is your name in all the earth. Let us pray. Lord God, you call us to work in your kingdom and leave no one standing idle. Help us to order our lives by your wisdom and to serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for this morning's readings.
I invite you to follow along on the back of your bulletin as we take in the portions of God's Word for this 18th Sunday after Pentecost. Our first lesson for the day is taken from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord warns Jeremiah of a plot against him, but knowing that he has been commissioned by the Lord to speak the message he was given to the audience he was directed to, Jeremiah did what he had been called to do and trusted that the Lord would make everything work out right. We hear the word. The Lord revealed their plot to me, so I became aware of it. He showed me what they were doing. I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I had not realized that they had plotted against me. They were saying, let us destroy the tree along with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living so that his name will no longer be remembered. But, Lord of armies, you judge righteously. You test the heart and mind. Let me see your vengeance on them, for I have presented my case to you. This is the word of our Lord. If you would turn to page 77 in the front of your hymnals, we will continue with the singing in unison of our psalmody for this morning, Psalm number 31. Trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Deliver me in your righteousness. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, the God of truth. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. My times are in your hands. Save me in your unfailing love. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. You heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever Amen. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, 
and he will be my Savior. Our second lesson for this morning is a continuation of our readings from James' epistle. We read chapter 3, verses 13 through 18. Who among you is wise and intelligent? Let him, by his good way of living, show that he does things in wise humility. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and lie contrary to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but it is worldly, unspiritual, and demonic. In fact, where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and every bad practice. But the wisdom that comes from above is first pure, then also peaceful, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who practice peace. This is the word of our Lord. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Hallelujah. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. These words are written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Please rise for the reading of this morning's gospel lesson. The Holy Gospel for this morning is recorded in St. Mark's account. We read chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. As we do this in Jesus' name, we recognize this is also our sermon text for today. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know this because he was teaching his disciples. He told them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. But three days after he is killed, he will rise. But they did not understand the statement and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they remained silent because on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he will be the last of all and the servant of all. Then he took a little child and placed him in their midst. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not just me, but also him who sent me. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you. Christ. The congregation may be seated. We continue with the singing of our hymn of the day, hymn 486, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us. Let 
blessings countless as the sand to whose yon thankful and the evil with your own unsparing hand and us hearts dear Lord to give you gladly freely of your own with the sunshine of your goodness melt our thankless hearts of stone fill our cold and selfish natures warmed by you at length believe that more happy and more blessed tis to give than to receive. Wondrous honor you have given to our humblest charity. sentence you have done it unto me can it be O gracious master that you need what we can do saying by your and needy give as I have given to you. Yes, the sorrow and the sufferings which on every hand we view channels are for gifts and offerings do by solemn right to you right of which we may not rob you that we may not choose but pay lest that face of love and pity turn from us on other day
May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be yours as we hear and meditate upon his holy word. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we, we begin our devotion, we hear again the introductory verse of our text. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know this because he was teaching his disciples. Heavenly Father, through your word of truth, strengthen us in saving faith. Fill us with the readiness that comes from the gospel to walk with you by faith. Amen. Your fellow redeemed uh, might, be, might be a school teacher, might be your boss, might be your close friend. They say to you, we have something important to talk about. And immediately you become uncomfortable. Am I going to fail? Am I going to lose a friend? Am I going to be fired? And in your discomfort, you really don't want to hear what they have to say so much as maybe distract them. You know they like sports, so you, you ask them, well, how about those twins? Or you might pick another team that you know that they favor more. You don't want to hear what they have to say because you assume it's going to be unpleasant. And in our text today, the disciples do hear something. And it is unpleasant to them. And so they have this feeling that they would rather talk about something else. They deflect. I guess that's human nature. Jesus is past the time of doing miracles in front of the crowds and preaching to the crowds, calling them to believe in him. This is crunch time for him. It is time to make sure the disciples hear what he has to say because Jesus has already shown himself in glory to Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. And it is only days until his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, which starts Holy Week and ends with him crucified and risen. And so he's speaking with the disciples. He, he did not want anyone to know this. He's not there to draw crowds. He's teaching the disciples. And here's what he tells them. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. But three days after he is killed, he will rise. What do you think they heard? This is the second time that Jesus plainly told them what he was going to have to endure as Savior, as the Messiah. The first time, he had said that he was going to be rejected by the Sanhedrin, those 71 scribes and elders and teachers of the law. And he was going to be killed. And on the third day, he was going to rise. They had heard that before. But something new came in today. He was going to be betrayed. Someone close to him was going to turn on him. And as a result, he was going to be killed. Again, what do you think they heard? Mark says, they did not understand the statement and were afraid to ask him about it. Please, Lord, they were thinking, don't say any more. Was one of us going to be the one to betray you? I don't know if you had biology in high school, but I think the disciples right at this point felt like that frog on the dissecting table with the skin splayed out and pinned to the, to the putty, at nothing hidden from view. Why did Jesus have to die? That was the law speaking to them, wasn't it? We are told by the prophet Isaiah that with his stripes we are healed. He was going to be sacrificed for the sins of mankind. And these disciples had to admit, yes, I am a sinner. And that's what you and I have to admit too, and it's not comfortable, is it? 
is because of our sins, yours and mine, the sins of the whole world, that Jesus had to go to the cross and die. That was the payment. But that idea that one of those people close to him would turn against him and make this happen, that was something they did not want to contemplate. So, in their minds, let's think of something else to talk about. And naturally, they were talking about greatness. Not how great Jesus was. Look, he's even willing to lay down his life for us, but how great am I? How, how great are you? Well, you're great, but I'm greater. That's what the disciples were talking about. Did they have reason to feel that maybe their greatness in the Lord's uh, estimation was at risk? You realize that by this time, only Peter, James, and John had been invited into the house where Jairus' daughter was. Only those three saw Jesus raise her from the dead. And they told the other nine disciples about it. And only Peter, James, and John, those three, were there on the Mount of Transfiguration. And when they came down, they didn't even tell the other nine what happened. And how do you think the eleven felt when Jesus singled out Peter and gave him that pet name, I'm going to call you Rock? Do you think they had some insecurities there? Some reasons to fight? Well, I was here when he did this, and, and I was listening to this teaching, and I was, and, and we were. It is natural for people to want to be great. And as the news about Jesus, the suffering servant, was so hard for them to swallow, so hard to hear, they changed the subject in their minds and they were fighting about how great they were here in this world. You have the, the mother of James and John also going to Jesus and asking, when you come into your kingdom, could my sons have first and second place in your kingdom? But here they're, they're bickering about how great they are now. Self-glorification. That's something that uh, out there in the world is practiced regularly. Uh, over in Germany, there was a lady reporter who was fired recently. She was in front of the camera with her microphone telling the people that this disaster had taken place and she and these other people were all working to help the people and clean things up. And then the truth came out that she really hadn't. Off camera, she had smudged herself on her face and on her clothes to make it look like she had been working with the people that were going through this crisis and trying to help. And she got fired. In her defense, she said, well, there were other times in the past where I had pitched in and done something. But the damage was done. Then there was a man who made a video of himself tipping a subway worker $1,000. And the, and the title of the video was, Man Tips Worker $1,000. He doesn't care. And and it was made to look like he was just a selfless, helping, caring person. But in all likelihood, as the people who saw the video concluded, he was just trying to promote himself and his feed. Self-glorification. As Christians, are we immune to that? No. There are, there are different sections of the Christian faith in the world that believe that proof that you trust in the Savior, proof that you believe the truth about him, is there in success and wealth. And if you have success and wealth, that means you're in tight with God and everything's good. And people will bank on that. But is that what Jesus is calling us to? No, no. Uh, he redefines greatness for them and calls them uh, to shrink away from that desire to make themselves look good before the world and one another 
and to follow God's example and God's will. They had remained silent when Jesus asked them about their argument. What, are you, what have you been talking about? And so he calls them forward. Uh, in the Eastern tradition, he sits down on the floor, crosses his legs, and they probably gathered in front of him and sat down the same way. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wants to be first, he will be the last of all and the servant of all. Then he took a little child and placed him in their midst. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not just me, but also him who sent me. If, you, uh, if you've been watching the news, you see in different countries how people value children, how they esteem them, how they care for them. And it's not really too much different from our own country, is it? If children are an, are an inconvenience, if they're going to be a burden, abortion for many is the simple solution to take care of the problem of that child. Children being uh, left for the state to take care of, for the state to feed, child abuse, all these different things let us know that many people do not hold children in very high regard. And yet Jesus takes this example of this simple little child and says, you want to be great in God's eyes. Trust in me. Care for those around you. In other words, like the two tables of the Ten Commandments say, love God and love your neighbor as yourself. He holds up this little child in his arms and says, here's the example of service. What is he telling us? Should we be striving for glory? No, we shouldn't be worrying about that. He calls upon us to serve one another in love. He calls us to be instruments of his peace as we reach out to others in the world, as we help, as we meet their needs. Jesus reminds us that we have glory, but it's a grace, a gift, that we will enjoy forever in heaven with him when we are glorified because he has paid for our sins and dressed us in his righteousness. Here in this world, he wants to use us as instruments so that others may be blessed and so that God might be glorified. That is something that goes against our human nature, and that's the very point. God wants to set our human nature and our tendencies aside, and, and instead of trying to figure out how we can look good in the eyes of our, our fellow Christians, in the eyes of the world, God says, serve. You notice, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. Does that mean that Jesus is residing in every child? No. But it means that we will be doing what is pleasing to him. And that, and that is what he gives us as, as that goal, that target. Uh, Thy will be done, we pray. This is a concrete way of practicing that very thing. The other thing he points out here, because he is our selfless Savior who was a servant for all of us, there are people who have a hard time trusting in Jesus, his suffering and death. The victory they love but they have a hard time accepting his laying down his life for us lost sheep. And so they'll say, well, I believe in God, but not this Jesus guy. He sounds like a loser. But Jesus says that if you welcome him, you're also welcoming the one who sent him. In another context, Jesus says anyone who does not have the Son who does not trust in the Son or does not want the Son to be the Savior, does not have the Father who sent him. And so he reminds us, he reminds us that we have salvation through faith. We have salvation as a gift. We are alive in Christ. 
And here in this world, we are alive in Christ to walk with him by faith and to follow him, to be little Christs, uh, imaging him as we go through this world, knowing that our glory is not something we have to strive for. It's safely waiting for us in heaven. I pray the Holy Spirit give you that, that loving heart and help to free you from that tendency that is oh so common of self-glorification. Amen. Please rise. We join in confessing our Christian faith, making use of the words of the Nicene Creed on page 31 in your hymnals. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray. Lord of power and grace, whose eyes are on the righteous and whose ears are open to their cry, hear the prayer of your people as we come now in thankfulness for the mercies that you pour down on us anew each day. We thank you for the gifts of your mighty providence. Make us mindful, O Lord, that you have provided us with life, breath, and being, and are the source of our daily bread. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the Savior of the world. Grant that we may believe in him with all our hearts, learning from him the great truths of the kingdom to which he bore faithful witness. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may produce the fruits of righteousness. May he endow us with unwavering faith that we might always be ready to do your will. We pray for the nations of the earth. Subdue terror and tyranny everywhere and call forth leaders who acknowledge that you are Lord over all the earth. Bless our own land. May it ever follow that which is good and turn from all that which is wicked that our people may prosper in uprightness and integrity. Hear, O Lord, our cry for those who are afflicted. We ask especially that you would watch over those who are at risk with the COVID virus and those who are enduring uh, the COVID virus. We pray that you would bless them with healing, grant them safety and recovery. Grant us health in body and soul and save us for your mercy's sake. We also pray this morning, we give thanks that you have made one Dustin and Amanda Baxter yesterday in marriage. We pray that you would continue to be with them and lead them forward as a, as a new couple uh, united with you. Hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Guide and uphold us during our pilgrimage in this world and bring us all to our heavenly home. Receive these petitions in the name of the Prince of Life, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the sacrament on page 33. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He sends the Holy Spirit to testify that we are his children and to strengthen us when we are weak. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of your glory. God and I will exalt you. I will give you thanks for you have become my salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, those who are prepared to commune will be ushered forward. Our distribution hymn for today is hymn 309, Draw Near and Take the Body of the Lord.
take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given into death for your sin. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given into death for your sin. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for you for the remission of sins. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith until life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Take, eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sin. Take, drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed for you for the remission of sins. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting.
Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise, we join in the song of thanksgiving. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He renews his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving alleluia alleluia hear the prayer of your people o lord that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world that the eyes which have seen the coming of your son may long for his coming again and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated. We join in singing our closing hymn, Hymn 324, Almighty God, your word is cast.
Good morning. morning. I'm glad you could be with us this morning. Um, Those people who are out harvesting, keep them in your prayers that things go safely. There's always, always that that, uh, need to have God watching over us as we're doing our work and gathering the harvest. Um, There was no Sunday school this morning. It will return next Sunday at the regular time. We have the notes about the, the calendars in the back for you to pick up today. Tomorrow and Tuesday, I'm going to be in Hutchinson for our fall pastoral conference. There's a note in the bulletin. If, uh, if you need me for something, I am reachable either through giving Cheryl a message or on my cell phone. God bless your day and your week.